just want to mention that I'm super excited for my uh, new Party Parrot t-shirt. And if you're not familiar with Party Parrot, you can look it up. But it's a set of animated GIFs that you can put in your Slack channel or your chat or wherever you want to use it. And uh, it's just a lot of fun. So um, we use that all the time in the subscriber Slack channel for GoRails. So if you're a subscriber or you want to become a subscriber and hang out with us in Slack, go ahead and do that and join us and you'll see Party Parrot all the time. And we just talk about Rails and JavaScript things and you name it, Elixir and Phoenix and all kinds of fun things. So, if you're interested in hanging out with us, uh, if you subscribe, you can join our Slack channel and hang out and talk about Party Parrot. But this episode is gonna be about SendGrid. So, I actually talked a long time ago about using Mandrill to send emails, and I was just covering the basics. So, transactional emails in your app are the idea that anytime a user takes an action and you need to send an email, that's a transactional email. Um, and you have these separate ones that are like marketing emails where you go write up your story and you send it out once a month or whatever, and that is a marketing email. And a lot of these services like SendGrid and Ma MailChimp and MailJet and all kinds of, uh, there's a ton of options. Um, all of these offer some variation of those services. So MailChimp used to um, offer another thing called Mandrill to send out transactional emails alongside their marketing emails. And that was free to like 12,000 emails a month, which was fantastic. But they decided to change their business model and make that paid. So I thought it'd be good to follow up and talk about using something like SendGrid as an alternative which does offer um, a free tier. So you can get 12,000 emails a month for free, which is fantastic. That's a ton of emails. Um, and they're around when you surpass that and you can start paying for it and taking advantage of their service for your business or whatever. So uh, I have no affiliation with SendGrid, but they're one of the bigger options that's out there and one of the most familiar names when you think about emails. There's Amazon SES and some other alternatives, which you are free to check out. And all of this is really gonna apply to those just as well. It just comes down to you have to create an, an account and an API key and set up your SMTP server and your Rails app to use all three of those uh, accordingly to each service. And that's about it. So none of them really will matter too much or vary too much, but we need to make sure we use the SMTP connection because we're gonna be using their SMTP servers to send emails. So when we send an email in our Rails app, we generate an SMTP, uh, well, we create a connection to their server, we generate an SMTP request and basically send it over to their server and they go and send that email out to all the actual recipients. So rather than us maintaining our own SMTP server, they do it, they're really good at it. You can do that yourself if you would like, but it's a lot of work or can be uh, to set it up and to scale it as well. So they're, uh, they're a popular option for that. Amazon has their options. Whatever. So you'll see in their documentation that they have also email marketing. Most of these have some mixture of like marketing and transactional stuff, but they have a web API as well where you can use their API, but we'll be using their SMTP service, their SMTP API to talk to them because that's a lot more easy to set up and standard. So that will allow you to define your email templates in your app and then uh, send those out. The web API, uh, like with Mandrill, you're able to define your templates in Mandrill in their website, and then you just tell it, I wanna send out that template, and then you could go update the template um, without having to redeploy your code, which could be nice, depending on how your, your team works or whatever. So you have that option, um, but we're gonna talk about the SMTP version where all of the templates for your emails live within your Rails app, and if you wanna make a change or fix a typo, you just have to redeploy your Rails app, and you can't update it live, with which you could probably do with the web API for most of these, if they offer it. 
But SMTP is what we're gonna take a look at. And so you'll sign up for an account and you'll basically go in here and create an, an API key in order to set that up. So let's do that after we actually go create a basic Rails app in order to uh, make something actually uh, testable. So let's go create a Rails app and then go set up SMTP.